Hi, this is Brian Dolan from the law firm Pepper Hamilton. Pepper has been a longtime sponsor of the New England Venture Summit and for the last two years have taken over the coaching sponsor role of the New York Venture Summit. This year's summit took place in mid-July and Pepper partner Scott Jones from our Health Sciences Department moderated two VC panels over the course of the summit. We're lucky to have Scott spend a few minutes with us today to recap what he learned from experience. Scott, welcome. Thanks, Brian. In addition to being in the firm's health science department, you're also a key member of our emerging growth practice, which works with startup and early stage companies. Working with these types of companies and VCs on a regular basis allow you to bring a unique perspective to the panels you moderated. Can you let our audience know the VC panels that you were on and any insights you can share with our listeners? Sure. Uh, So on the first day, I was on the Getting Your Company Funded panel, which uh, had about eight traditional uh, VCs. And on the second day, I was on the Corporate Venture Capital What You Need to Know, which had, as you'd expect, mostly corporate uh, venture capital arms. Uh, but then it also did have one representative from a traditional VC, just to sort of you know sort of play both sides of uh, of the VC world. Uh, the one thing I, I got to tell you that I found is that at the end of the day, um, while the questions from the audience seem to indicate that investor that the entrepreneurs uh, thought that there was a big difference between traditional VC and corporate VC. Um, th- there wasn't much, with with one exception. Uh, I mean, for the most part, they're, they're all looking for the right fit for the type of investment they're looking for. They they have a sense of return um, and want to make sure that they're you know, properly vetting who they're looking at. But the, the one main exception was that the corporate VCs, uh, many of the corporate arms tend to be looking for investments that are within the bubble of their strategy, their overall corporate strategy. I mean, it, it ran the gamut. There was a few where they really view the corporate VC arm as more of a um, of an extension of their business development group, um, and there were some others in which you know, the VC arm was definitely something to put um, some underutilized cash to good use, but in general, the, they were still looking for companies that were within the industry or industry adjacent or, um, you know, ultimately what they were working on was similar to what the, the larger corporation was working on. Um, so that, I mean, that, that's really some of the, the main insights I saw. You know, w- one thing that we had heard a lot and, and, you know, I'll probably come back to a few times is the fact that there are really a lot of startups um, these days that it's it's more than ever, um, which is you know, really what makes some of this stuff exciting. Now, Pepper has also hosted a private dinner of 30-plus uh, VCs the night before the summit. Can you let our listeners know, were there any common themes in the venture community that you heard during your conversations that night? Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, one was what I just mentioned about the fact that there there seems to be a lot more companies than ever um, that, are, that are new, looking for funding, that have great ideas. I mean, uh, the, the entrepreneurial spirit in America, I can say, is... is is, is pretty, you know, pretty much frothy and thriving, which which is a good thing. And uh, you know, the VCs appreciate that because it, it gives them a, a good amount of, um, of of opportunities to choose from. Uh, I think the one thing that that goes almost hand in hand with that is most of the VCs that I talked to, uh, they were saying that a lot of times they're they're getting. Um, they're getting introductions or, or people are trying to, to get in the door with opportunities that really don't quite fit what the VCs are looking for, and, and not in terms of a return or, or, um, or anything like that, but more, it, it seems like some of these VCs are not, uh, sorry, some of these entrepreneurs are not doing their homework in terms of the funds they're going after. Uh, you know, one person in particular is, is at a fund that does a lot of health care, and you know, there was a uh, retail tech that had uh, entrepreneur that had nothing to do with health care that was looking to get funding from them. You know, th- that sort of thing the, the VCs really don't want to, to see. They, they want the entrepreneurs to do their homework, to, to really target the funds or the, the corporate VC arms, if that's, if that's what they're going for, that, um, you know, that, that really fit 
or that they would fit into what their normal investment profile looks like. And, um, they all said that's pretty easy to figure out. You know, it's usually on the website uh, of the VC. Um, but they said with so many entrepreneurs and, and the need to be selective, you know, they, they want to make sure that, that you know, the, the entrepreneurs have done their homework before they even start the conversation. Uh, that's funny you mentioned that. We were talking yesterday with some of our private equity partners, and they were commenting how they're seeing more and more of these funds that are very industry-specific, where previously they were industry agnostic, and I think that's going to be happening both VC and PE. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think the PE funds are definitely even more um, even more industry-specific. I think the venture funds that I, the, of the people I talk to, you know, they're, they're definitely getting more specific, but they're still using a pretty broad brush. And, you know, so they might be something like, you know, healthcare, whereas I think the PE funds are drilling down even a step further to be, you know, health tech or, uh, you know, med tech or devices or even life science if, if they're looking at pharma and biotech. But I, I think that a lot of VCs are still at that, at that broader level, but, but, but zooming in a little bit. Staying on those entrepreneurs that you were mentioning before, one of the benefits that we as a firm have at sponsoring these summits is just the sheer number of exciting companies that we get to interact with over two days. What were some of the biggest concerns you heard from these startup leaders as they're looking for financing? It, you know, it really goes back to that common theme of there being so, so many entrepreneurs out there because they were saying that it, it's, it's harder. They feel like they have to work a lot harder than they did in the past, which, you know, it's interesting. Many of the entrepreneurs viewed that as a good thing, and, and they really liked the fact that they had to sharpen their pencil in order to, you know, to get funding. There was a couple that were lamenting the fact that, oh, you know, 10 years ago I could have talked to this fund and we would have had a deal in a few months. Um, but that's just not really the case anymore. Um, the other thing they've been hearing a lot, and, and I think this trend has been going on probably since even as, as far back as 2008, um, is that the, the VCs are really doing deeper dives um, and, and really asking harder questions on things that they, they may not have in the past. Um, I, I don't think it, it's that they're doing any less diligence but I, I think they're, they're, the, the VCs are thinking a lot more about some of the answers. And, and when money was flowing easier in the pre-2008 years and, and maybe a little bit after that to some degree, they, you know, the issues weren't as big and, and they could be gotten over in, in easier ways. But I think there's a lot more uh, negotiation around some smaller issues and, and that's what some of the entrepreneurs are feeling. Yeah, again, depending on which entrepreneur you ask, I think the most, most of them found it to be okay because you know they knew what they had as an idea they they didn't mind the rigor um, because they you know they were satisfied with what they were doing but I think there was also a few that were just lamenting that um, that fact because um, you know it, they, they felt it made it harder to get to get funding you know what, one of the other interesting things that came out of the the corporate panel that I did uh, from a lot of these companies as I, as I mentioned the first was that uh, a lot of the entrepreneurs did not seem to appreciate the fact that the corporate VCs, you know, really act more like VCs than business development, and they're not necessarily an entree into a potential acquisition by the corporate, um, the corporate parent. Uh, the other thing that I don't think a lot of the the, the entrepreneurs had realized, and that we had, you know, I talked to a couple of them after the panel, is that because these corporate VCs are looking for companies that are in line with their strategy to some degree, they also, in addition to the funding, provide a lot of door opening for these entrepreneurs. You know, in, in that if if it's you know one, if it's a chemical company, for instance, and and the entrepreneur is 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 creating a new chemical or, or something, if they pair with an industry player as opposed to a regular VC fund, usually that industry player has some um, ability to to talk to vendors or be a vendor on the on the company on the entrepreneur and the startups uh, behalf and actually get better terms in some cases um, that that team ran in a, in a couple of the uh, the corporate VCs obviously it's, it's really with the the 
in the industries that are more manufacturing and, and actually have a product. That, but um, even some of the tech industries, the, the, the corporate VCs said that you know, besides offering funding, we also offer a lot of doors that we can open a lot easier than a, than a regular VC. Well, that's great, Scott. Thanks for spending the time with us today. We're running out of time now, but we appreciate you spending some um, minutes here with us to give us your thoughts on the recap. Uh, my pleasure. For our listeners, if you're interested in more information about Pepper's Emerging Growth Practice, or particularly our Pepper Seed Program, which is a deeply discounted program for startups and early stage companies that qualify, please email me at dolanb at pepperlaw.com. That's D-O-L-A-N-B as in boy at pepperlaw.com. Thank you.